So, five years ago, solar was really hot and growing like crazy. Then, to picture that growth, the entire 2006 market, when I started in solar, was sold in only 15 days in 2012. That is like 65% market growth. But then, two years ago, solar started to collapse. But ITS is still here. 45 million euros in invested equity. 100 million euros in revenues over the last three years. And from 1 to 180 employees, and then back to 100. It has really been a roller coaster ride with big ups and downs. But it has been the most exciting experience in my life. We built the company around five core values. Let me tell you about those. Always provide value. So we are basically a high-tech junkyard for solar cells. So when you produce solar cells, you get like 2 to 3% defective rate out of your production. And that was really my problem when I was finance manager back in one of the leading European cell manufacturers. What to do with these cells? This is a defective solar cell, but with our technology, and you can see it applied here in the upper, upper right corner, we have freed the cell of dangerous defects. This is the China way of doing business. You cut them into pieces, and these are today our customers. So we sold for $5.5 million into this uh, segment in 2012. But there is a better way, and this is the ITS way. We test each and every solar cell better than anyone else in the industry. And upon this competence platform, we have built unique technologies to get out the full potential of the cells. So then you may think, well, what's the quality of these uh, end products? Well, in a, scientifically, uh, in a scientific performance test with 170 modules out in the field, we ranked top 10. Now that's quite impressive, considering that we start with defects. But in our fully automatic, world-leading module manufacturer in Sweden, we convert these cells to the super high quality products. So basically, we are making the green industry even greener. That's like greener than green. <laughs> so, and because we start out with problem solar cells, and of course we hate to call it that, because our, uh, our, with our technology, this is really gold. But because we start with this, we have a carbon footprint that is 70% lower than the other module players. Number two. Always sustainable. This story really starts at London School of Economics. In the first year for the business students, in the first class, they're sitting there expectantly waiting for the professor to learn them as much as possible. And he comes into the classroom, he walks up to the whiteboard and writes in big capital letters, never run out of cash. He turns around silently, does not say a word, and walks out of the classroom. And that bewilderment that you just felt, that was exactly how the students felt when he did not return. But Telef Torleson, later to be one of the leading venture capitalists in Scandinavia. He was one of those students. And he said that was probably the most important lesson learned in business school. So, 
Why is it so difficult to never run out of cash? Well, basically because you as a leader need to have complete understanding of where you are, where to go, what's happening on the sales side, how should you run your production, how should you finance, what's your cash buffer. It's extremely demanding on the analytical side to answer these questions. And one thing is for sure, investors hate surprises. Bankers hate surprises. I hate surprises. So in order for you to be able to be three to four months before you run out of cash, you need to do your homework on the analysis side. That is true sustainability. Then, number three, always the right people. I wrote my master's thesis on Norwegian successful entrepreneurs and what do the best ones do different? And there was one thing that I learned. You have to find the right people. And these are not the guys that hammer themselves on the chest and say, we are the winners. They are too humble for that. But they have an enormous professional will to succeed. They never give up and they make things happen. So five years ago when I founded ITS, I knew there was one thing that I was lacking, at least. I needed gray hair. So instead of going to the beauty parlor and have them put some gray hair in, I decided to work with people that had gray hair already. So Telof and I, we were discussing some potential senior board members for ITS. And I was like, well, why don't we hire that guy instead? And I was like, two months in the position as CEO. And he's like, whoa, that is really unusual for a founder to be proposing. But I was like, well, he built the REC solar business from zero to 700 million euros, from one employee to 550. It's not a step down for me to work with such a guy, it's a big step up. And then I could do what I love most, which is finance and being CFO. It was great. Number four, always professional excellence. And this is a core value with a lot of depth because it's so difficult to be always professional. Let me tell you a little different story. Two months before I founded the ITS, I went to the bankers and said, dear bank manager, we need to meet because in 18 months time, I'm going to need 10 million euro credit line from you. And imagine what happened on the other side. It's like, ooh, who's this crazy kid? <laughs> but so, I, I, and I continued, well, but in order for you to be comfortable to give me this, we need to meet on a regular basis. So I did not fully get the 10 million euros, but I did get 7 million euros, which is not too bad for a company ramping up production and hardly any sales, or what do you think? And here's my secret to hide how I did it. I decided early on to run parallel board meetings with the investors and the bank to ensure complete transparency and no surprises to these guys. And the investment that you do on the relationship side, this is paying off later when you need it the most. Number five, never contented. 2011, prices fell 50%. And then in 2012, prices fell another 30%. We went right into the valley of death where no one could m earn money because prices fell below cash cost. We had 32 million euros in revenue. We lost 15 million euros. And when losing 1 million euro a month, well, then you can either give up and die or you can fight on and do whatever necessary to survive. So the board found a new CEO. David Hogg from Suntech Power. 
he had been leading Suntech, being chief operating officer for 20,000 employees, the largest solar company in the world, 2.6 billion dollars revenues. And he decided to come to ITS. He decided to be my boss. I was, of course, a little scared that I would lose my job at the same time. But the board and the investors urged me to stay on. And I was really thrilled to be able to work with such a great leader. So we made a plan with the bank before we went into the breach of the bank covenants. Because that's the kind of insight you get when you're good at forecasting. So we cut fixed costs with 50%. And I tell you, it was really a tough time because I had to fire a lot of my friends. And I, I had to close my hometown factory. But we hit both eyes on cost reduction each and every month. And this has enabled us to be cash flow positive now in the first quarter, right in the middle of the valley of death. We have an extraordinarily strong business model. And with thousands of bankruptcies around us, last week we made the announcement that we will increase production. So, to end up, this is a picture of the banker giving me a cake. And how many companies have you heard about that has gotten a cake from their bank recently? <laughs> Look at those smiles. Believe me, that guy has been fighting and struggling for us to survive. And then I'll leave you with one final thought. If you think that investing in solar is difficult now because of all the troubles, well, imagine how valuable it is for you to know about ITS, the only company in the world that turns defective cells into a sustainable and profitable business. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? What sort of challenges do you have with that profitability and what, how, how do you expect to maintain that? What problems, uh, what challenges we had with profitability? Yeah, considering, you know, the state of the solar industry. Well, our, our problem was actually always that we had very good pros, uh, gross profit margins, but we didn't have enough volume. So uh, even though we had the very good profit margins, we sort of could not scale up fast enough. And it's also, uh, as I said, back on this cash flow stuff, well, you, need to, you really need to watch your cash flow because these guys, they hate surprises. And if you run out of cash flow, then it's over. So y you can lose money, like I said, like 1 million euro a month and still be <laughs> relatively comfortable uh, as long as you have control on the cash side. So, and, and uh, of course, as long as you have a survival plan. And uh, since we, we, we met the survival plan and hitting really bullseyes, month by month by month by month, this is also, of course, a confidence builder uh, to the investors and to the bankers that they see that you know what you're doing. Well, thank you. Thank you.